Welcome to the Nam Culture Show. I'm Becky. And I'm Kenny. In this first episode, we go to Ripley's Camp. And Ripley's Camp is 20 kilometers outside Ventuk, and we show you all the cars, all the food, all the leisure, and all the community that we have on this show. And here at Ripley's, you can do a self-drive game view um, at your own leisure. We also have the wonderful opportunity of spending an evening in one of these wonderful chalets where you have a kitchen outside, a bra area, and you can camp with your own equipment or you can hire equipment right here, inclusive, at Ripley's Camp. Let's go see what the rooms look like. Follow me. And as we can see, it is quite spacious. Firstly, we have enough cupboard space for you and your oh yeah that means so good <laughs> as you can see you have enough cupboard space and they have twin beds this is fantastic um we have a full shower and we've got the toilet indoor i wonder how these beds feel no do you think i could stay here tonight <laughs> We have a fantastic little kitchen. The kitchen is equipped with a little stove, a microwave, somewhere to wash your dishes, and it's on the outside. Not only do you have your own kitchen on the outside, you also have a bar facility right here at one of the chalets at the police camp. On your self-drive, you can see the following animals, from sables to nyala to springbok to blessbok. Today we'll be speaking to Jan and he's going to take us through setting up camp in this tough bucky. Setting up is fairly quick. Let's All quickly right. start where everyone wants to start. So when you stop, what's the first thing you want? Is a beer oh, wow. or something cold to drink. So Jeez, look at that thing. Slide out a 90 <laughs> litre fridge, Jeez. which has two compartments, a freezer one side and a fridge on the other side. Whole Nicely kitchen. set up kitchen as well with all your utensils, everything in it. This is awesome. Let's quickly grab out a table. Oh wow, look at that. So, set up your table. Well, this was literally under two minutes. Under two minutes. So, Jeez. we'll quickly look at the sleeping arrangement. Check out the gas. So, how many people roughly can fit in here? Okay, you can sleep four people. All right. Very easy. You've got a double bed at the top. So, when I flip this one open, you can climb in. Jeez. So, I'll put down the one on the side as well. Guys, you should see how spacious this thing is, eh? It's insane. A double bed or single bed at the bottom, you've got a double bed at the top. Yeah. This is now a shower, all right? Yeah. So, you have a 20 litre shower on the inside or geezer. So, which has water pumps. It works from gas or from electricity. We do bigger tires on our vehicles to help yeah. with stability. Currently, I run um, Pere Suspension all safety as well to ensure our clients safety yes. um, that helps with vehicle handling and so on as well so that right. is why we do it and don't keep it standard okay the box in the top it's yeah. empty right. um, as you've seen in the back yeah. and so on so putting wood um, that's where you can put your wood inside with I'll well. definitely be in touch man and thank you for your time Thanks, man. so there you go guys a house on wheels where else can you go Anyway, if you want to get yourself one, get it at Avis Safari Rental. I'm back here again with Kali, and he's going to show us another monstrous build. 
Uh, tell us what you got here. What do you have here? Hi, Becky. Thanks, yeah. sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's it's quite interesting. Uh, uh, this is this thing is coming from a friend of mine. He was he was talking one night about a, a, an American style camper, but we have to do it in in, a, in maybe an off road. Yeah. In off road, which is for Africa. And so yes, I came back and I and I bought this Iveco 4x4, and. Uh, yeah, it's a chassis cap, and I start building the yeah, the base yeah. at the back, the flat bed. Yeah. Everything put in a put in a, a, a jockey wheel kind of thing that's used for cement trucks. Yeah. And I put it in, and then we started building the. Did the you frame. just say cement truck? Yeah. So uh, this is another. Yeah, they just <laughs> mixed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they used it for cement trucks. Yeah. Amazing. And so yeah, we yeah. we start building it. It was it was also a dream. It was it was. Um, it was a challenge. Yeah. There was there was nothing like that in in Africa. That was the first one. That's yeah. well, everybody said, "What are you doing? How are you doing?" And right, I've got people a, think uh, you're crazy when you yeah. when you're talking about <laughs> dreams, man. Yeah. Yes, I have. I've, I've had a camper. I've, I've had a, 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 a Volkswagen LT35. Yeah. I've also built it as a camper. Yeah. And uh, it was quite nice. And it's boring. So, yes, Let's just say what, it. What, what, what I've decided <laughs> is. Um, what must I do? What are we using the camper for um, yeah. when we're driving? The only yeah. thing that, um, that, that, that we actually use the camper for is to, to get some drinks, cold <laughs> drinks, <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the back of the camper. Yeah. And, and the other thing is um, the, the, the wife has to go to the toilet. So yeah. yes, I started to, to build that thing and I put a toilet in the back there. You're kidding me. Yes. You're saying there's a toilet there's a in toilet there? There's a toilet in the back there and I put a fridge what? in the back there. And it's even got a microwave. Could you show me? I, can I mean, show I, you. I can show you. The, the, the I think the camera really needs to get a, in here and have a look at this. There's, a, there's a, two fridges in, in the car. It's only right. it's only for drinks. This fridge. Yeah. And uh, you can take it out. Jeez. And uh, yeah, the access is everybody there. There's still food in it. Look at that, guys. Yeah. I don't know, <laughs> but this is this. Forget yeah. about any other builds. This is sick. There's this the, is there's the ice, and I think it's also full of keeps ice. everything nice and cold. They still are you kidding me, guys? <laughs> Look yeah. at this, real ice. Yeah. I start building the base, and and my my idea of a of a camper is you must sleep nice. Yeah. And and then the the ablutions at every campsite are yeah. very nice, but but it's nice to have your own. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So they decided I must build a camper with a bed that's two by two meters. Yeah. Yeah. And I must have a, a bathroom. That's one by two meter. Wow. So that was that was, and I said, all right. When we start building it, and I said, that is the two main things I want. That's it. And that's then it. we start that's building it. it, and we wow. even put in a, a washing machine. In. So, wow, the interior looks amazing. There's an air conditioner in top there. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow. You've got your fridge there, you've also got a microwave in Jeez. there, and then you've got the freezer in, down there. Then you've got your TV here. I can see. You've got music there. Is this there. a sound system? Sound system is in there. Cupboards. Oh, yeah, I think so. you need anything more Yeah. to do leisure camping. This, this is, is it. This is, this is, this is it. camping. All this, how long did it take you to build? Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. I bought the vehicle, uh, yeah. the Iveco, and then I, then I start building this one that the Iveco built yeah. first. Yeah. And I start with the base of this. And that took me about three to, three, three to four months, the old base, because it's oh, everything right. designable. Right. Uh, you, don't know, you don't know what to expect. Exactly. When you build something like that, yes. It, and then, uh, then I took it to Cape Town, and they and AC Motorhomes built the, the box for me. That took about three months to, to build the All box. Right. Only, All yeah. Right. I've left the, the whole rig there. All right. But um, I enjoy it very much. All right. I love go going up to the rivers. All so right. I've got a, I've got a tow winch at the back, and I I'm only. You did uh, mention a boat uh, yeah, I, uh, earlier uh, when we. I when tow we my spoke. boat with. Uh, All right. Got a picture of it. I put it right. down to the river. My boat's also unique. It's the only, only one in South Africa and Namibia with a jet drive, outboard jet drive motor. Wow. So uh, the reason for that is yeah. I don't know the rivers that well. So, exactly, yeah, so exactly. I can drive in shallow water. So All right. Uh, uh, All about right. the rocks and everything else. But uh, thank you so much, Kali. It's a pleasure. Thank you. All there right, you have okay. it, guys.
Welcome to Food Culture. My name is Kenny and today we're going to make some breakfast and see what the fire has in store for us. Knowing your way around the kitchen is just not enough. You need to find out where to find the best produce and the freshest vegetables. So I was advised to go to Pick and Pay. Here I found delicious strawberries, firm tomatoes, a vast variety of spices and a grey meat. It was quite an experience. Thank you so much to Pick and Pay. And remember, Pick and Pay opens at 7. So for my very first task, I had to feed 10 hungry children. It was quite exciting because they decided on flapjacks. Flapjacks takes about 10 minutes in the oven or about 12 minutes on the stove. The trick to scramble eggs is very easy. In order to ensure fluffiness, all you have to do is make sure the pan is not too hot and when you add the butter and the eggs, you keep on stirring continuously with a spatula. And the flapjacks are ready. The scrambled eggs are done. And now it's time for the fruit. We decided to go with kiwi, some grenadella and banana. When all is ready and cut, I think it's time to finalize our presentation. So we've got the eggs, the flapjacks, we add some cheese to that. And of course, we see the delicious bacon. And finally, every child's favorite, peanut butter and syrup for flapjacks. Let's go see where these children are. Children, breakfast! Breakfast! Breakfast. Okay, one by one now. Everybody, what is on the table? What is this? Scramble eggs. What is this here? No. <laughs> Flapjacks. What is these things here? And what is this here? And what is this one here? Peanut butter. And this one here? Cheese. And that one there? Peanut Okay, let's eat. As for a late lunch, we decided to have a delicious steak on a rotisserie with some Brazilian rub. Let's have a look what I did. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to use a Brazilian rub and that you want to make sure goes all over the place. You bounce it nicely. Now the secret ingredient here is smoked paprika. Also available at pick and pay stores nationwide. Black pepper. You want to make sure that it penetrates um, but because it's going to be sticky it's going to seal the steak. This we got from Ripley's, it's his own homemade barbecue spice and you cover that last for him and lastly you do that Brazilian rub on top again. No salt required, all these spices have salt in them. Okay. You can do this the night before um, when you do this the night before, it can soak in nicely, so it's marinated, etc. Now we're ready to go to the fire. We're going to make a side dish, Mediterranean couscous salad. With the Mediterranean couscous salad, you need 250 grams of couscous, you need 250 milliliters of boiling water and one tablespoon of oil. Uh, preferably olive oil. So what you do is you put the water and the oil in the bowl and then you put the couscous in and let it soak. When it's done soaking you will have a hard couscous that you can fork out. As you can see this one is done and it's forked out. Now for the ingredients for the vegetables that goes into the couscous salad. First we do the onions. The onions go into the bowl and everything gets mixed up all the colors. The olives. And we leave the tomatoes and the feta for last. So we have this now. All we need to do is mix them up. 
So we have the juice of the tomato to make it nice and moist and we'll just add the balsamic vinegar, give that a nice stir and then you add all these ingredients to the couscous salad. There we go. As you can see it's still fluffy but we're getting all those nutritional vegetables and now to add those tomatoes up, just add them. You may use normal tomatoes, but make sure that they're nice and um, hard and they're not overripe. Now what's gonna make the difference in here, because I haven't added any salt, I haven't added any spice yet. The feta cheese already has, it. it's already salty as you can see, but we will drizzle that on top. I will crumble that on top. This is very important. We're going to now add the lemon zest. It's gonna give that acidity. Uh, the trick with the feta cheese is it crumbles quickly, so what you want to do is cut it into small cubes and it will crumble nicely and you'll be able to see it and it will not disappear inside the salad. Now, don't um, stir it as yet. Just before you serve, you stir it and that will get the saltiness into the, into the couscous through the feta cheese. A sprinkle of black pepper, nothing serious, and then the parsley. And that is your side dish for the main course uh, this afternoon. All ingredients are available at all pick and pays nationwide in Namibia. And the meat is ready. Now the secret to this rotisserie dish is of course the relish that we add to the meat. Charred garlic is what we put into the herbs that make it so delicious. The full recipe is available on our Facebook page. And in community culture, we connect to the local communities and see what being Namibian is all about. By introducing you to those who have selflessly sacrificed their time and resources to better the lives of others. Namibia is one of the driest countries on earth. Have you ever had difficulty to go get water to drink? Portable water. Here with us today is Quinton Els from H2O for Africa. Let's hear what he has to say. As we know, Namibia is one of the driest countries in the world. A lot of people don't have access to clean water. So we made it a mission of ours to, to try and find ways to, to deliver clean water to people. And you know, obviously another problem we have here is access to electricity. So we found this brilliant technology developed by a company in Australia that basically gives you clean water from any source without any electricity. And it takes about 10 minutes to set up. So the way it works really is water gets fed through the system and on the other side you get distilled water. Now, People might say to you, distilled water has its own problems. Yes, it does. It needs minerals. You can put mineral replacement tablets in the water, obviously to, up, to, to lift the, the minerals. But the most important thing is, you can put this thing anywhere without any electricity. This is a self-containing unit. You don't need anything else. And it basically gives you clean water on the other side within minutes. So we'll demonstrate to you now how normal daily laundry water, after we've washed a bit of washing here, can be repurposed for drinking water. We first regulate the, um, the water flow with a the, with the small little water flow regulator like this until you just get a small trickle between four to eight liters per hour that must go through the system to give you around 20 to 40 liters per day of distilled water. The water is starting to flow through the system but once it's filled up the whole surface area of this panel it condensates against this top film and because the outside temperature is cooler than the inside temperature, it then forms droplets. Those droplets run all the way down the felt and then it has a separate catchment area, which, or a little gutter, which then catches all the distilled water. The water that runs through the system, in a way, acts as an automatic cleaning system. It basically cleans the felt, but that water then comes out here as brine, but it's treated brine. So this process, even though this is your distilled water with nothing in it, obviously very safe to drink. So the water that comes out here is UV treated. So any living organism would have been eliminated through the boiling process inside the unit. Even though the brine outlet water still contains um, unwanted minerals, it can still be used to things like irrigation. This is the distilled water. As you can remember, it was uh, laundry 
detergent filled, we put some sand in there, we mixed it up and it's clear water. Perfectly safe to drink. Throughout the series we will identify a small community or a household that can make use of a, of a panel like this and we will be donating it to those people, we'll install it and hopefully it will impact their lives for the better. If you need more information about these panels and where you can get them in Namibia, you can just go to our Facebook page, H2O for Africa, and uh, yeah, we'll get in contact with you and we can uh, assist you. This is a first aid kit, specifically for motorists. You can keep this in the back of your trunk or your boot. I got this at Langeron's Pharmacy. You can give them a call and they can deliver it to you. Well, or you can just go there yourself. I don't know what's inside, so I'm gonna ask Kyle to come and explain what's inside. Hello, that's Kyle. I'm Kyle. Right. Yeah, I'm from Emed Rescue 24, and I'm gonna help you guys to. Uh, not yet. I'm a paramedic, so I'm like I'm like a doctor. I just work in an ambulance, so we're like road doctors. I'm gonna help you guys figure out what's inside this kit and uh, how to use it. Put it in the car, right? Make sure mommy and daddy don't forget it when you go on trips. So inside the bag. Right, the first most important thing we have in my hands now, who knows what this is? Gloves. It's gloves, and why are they important? Because I know. Blood in your I know. There we go. So it's to keep us safe and to keep the person that we're helping safe. All right, what else have we got in here? Okay, we got a pair scissors. of scissors. Scissors! We, all, we know how to play with these in school, right? Yeah. Okay, so the scissors. Don't kill yourself. Yes, exactly. Very, 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 very important, right? These are sharp, so we're only going to use these to cut bandages, right, oh. to the right size. When something is in the body of a human being, you yes. cut it out. We don't do that. That's, that's for the doctors in the hospital. You've got splints in your hands. So these are what you're going to use if you think somebody's got a broken bone. And my leg, if I've got a fracture in my leg. Good Becky. Question. Good question. Yeah. Brecky's got a broken uh, leg, yeah. so that the bones don't move and they don't cause any more injury. Yeah. Are we ready? Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. Ready? Yes. One, two, three, up. Okay. And Cut. then we're good? Yeah. Good. Good morning. My name is Dixon Mambi from Namspire Sports. And um, it's such a wonderful opportunity partnering up with uh, Oculus and the Law Vision Center. Uh, we found that it was very important for us as, uh, as coaches and that deal with athletes to have our vision tested because uh, we spend a lot of time outside and in the sun and as well the vision health of, of our athletes that we deal with. We have about 300 to 400 uh, children in our system that we train each and every afternoon around Namibia and it's very important for us that their vision is also checked and that their vision health is up to par. So thanks a lot to Oculus for a wonderful opportunity and uh, hopefully this partnership will um, make sure that everyone is aware about their vision health. Hi, I'm Dave Hammond from Connect People to People and Namspire Sports. And today we're going to be teaching the kids how to play hockey and cricket. Thank you very much. I'm also from uh, Connect People to People and Namspire Sports and after this we are going to teach the children to listen and a communication game. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do is hockey. So very important, this is our stick. Your left hand is going to be on top, your right hand is going to be down lower. Hold it like that. Huh? Down there. And then you go. Okay, give to Jamie. Okay. One there. So we're just working on hand-eye coordination. No, don't turn. Like turn that. Like However you've got to do it, you're making sure we've got hand-eye okay. coordination and we're catching that ball. Look at Dave. Watching the ball. Good oh, hit. Very good. <laughs> oh, good shot. I'm going to get you through this landmine. Can you see? No? No. Okay, hey, don't move. Stop. A little bit Stop. forward, a little bit okay. forward. Okay, one step we've forward. Okay. Good. good. One more step forward. <laughs> Good, one more step forward. Forward. Okay. Again. Okay. A big step. Wow. Come, stand in the circle here. Excellent, excellent. And I think we've come to the end of our first episode. It has been great. Thank you to Ripley's. And if you want to know more about NAM culture, we're available on the following social media network. Check us out on Facebook, NAM Culture, hashtag, as well as TV2Africa.
would like to say thank you very much to Ava Safari Rental, Emet Rescue, Langerans Pharmacy, and this would have not been possible without Kali and Krista from Ripley's Camp. Thank you, until next time, goodbye.